on the phone right now. It's Amy's like nephew in law or something. What is it, Amy? Yes, he's married to my niece. So it's your nephew. Yeah, nephew in law. Yeah, right? I guess I'm his aunt in law. We were talking about a woman who eats raw beef as her diet. Like she just buys it and eats it. And Amy goes, well, I have a, a family member who is a meat scientist. I don't even know this is a real thing. I'll be honest with you. But I was so curious. And we have Amy's nephew-in-law on now, Dr. Drew Cassens. Dr. Drew Cassens, thank you for hanging out with us today. I, I'm really interested in what you do, so we, we appreciate the time. Well, Bobby, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay. Questions, questions. I got questions. Are you really a meat scientist? How, how, how did you get into being a meat scientist? Yeah, so I really am meat scientist. I know it sounds crazy, um, but I think what all started with my uh, background in, in animal ag and got involved in meat judging at Texas A&M, and that really sparked the passion for meat science. And I think a lot of times people think about meat science is so weird, but, you know, it's needed. We, have, we eat meat, so we have to have the science to say to make sure it's good for us. Does anyone ever go, hey, so what do you do, doctor? And you're like, uh, they're like, are you like a heart doctor or are you like a – you know, knee doctor, and you're like, no, I'm a meat doctor. Is that ever, they're like, what, seriously? No, definitely, for sure. Um, it's really funny. Um, I, I joke all the time that I, I'm a doctor, but definitely can't save anybody's life by any means. Um, so we just, you know, the meat science side, we're just making sure that food is, tastes good, and it's, it's juicy, it's, t- it's flavorful, and it's safe for you. Okay, here are my real questions. Is it safe to eat raw meat like this lady was talking about? Raw beef, can you just eat raw meat from the grocery store? Um, you know, not in that capacity, right? We, we got to make sure we're cooking our, our meat products to a safe temperature. Now there are things like, you know, beef tartare, if you've heard of that before, that is a raw beef product you can consume, but we add things to it like, uh, lime juice, lemon juice, acid to kind of help and break down that bacteria. So it is healthy to eat. If I went out and killed an animal and I was real hungry, could I just eat it right then and there raw? Um, you know, I would definitely advise against that, Bobby. Um, <laughs> probably not the best idea to do. And, and the reasoning why is because, you know, bacteria lives in the environment. And a lot of times those animals have bacteria on their hide and on their skin. And as you're breaking that carcass down, a lot of times that bacteria gets them to the carcass. And then that can result in you getting deathly ill. So I, I would definitely advise against <laughs> going out there and killing the animal and eating it right away. We have Dr. Drew Cassens on who – did you graduate from Tarleton State or do you work there now? I work there now. So I got my undergrad and master's at A&M, my PhD at Oklahoma State. Okay. Let me ask you this question then, Mr. Fancy, because sometimes I go to fancy places and I'll see there's Wagyu beef on the menu. Are Wagyu cattle really massaged and serenaded with classical music? <laughs> so – I would say definitely not here in the U.S. Uh, maybe in other countries like Japan, they might do that kind of stuff. But most of the Wagyu beef you're going to see here in the United States, you just a breed of cattle. And those breed of cattle just really tend to be highly marbled, very tender, very juicy, a lot of flavor to them. And So I don't think we really serenade and massage those cattle here in the U.S. like they might in, in Japan and other countries. If I'm ordering a steak at a restaurant, for health purposes, what's the best way to order a steak? Well, you know, when it comes to a steak, I mean, you can order that medium rare. I mean, that's what I prefer. Um, even people do rare and blue rare. Uh, a lot of times, you know, with steaks, that bacteria is on the surface. And so by putting on a grill that's really hot, you're killing all bacteria. And so it, it's safe to eat. Uh, about 135, 140, no problem for sure. Did you say blue rare? What's that mean? So blue rare, so we have degrees of doneness um, for, for steaks. And blue rare is the lowest degree of doneness. And it's more of just cooking the surface just a little bit. And so on the inside, you still have a fairly raw piece of meat. And oh. some cons- people do like that. I mean, it's cold in the center. Um, oh, for me, it's not very appealing. That sounds disgusting. Oh, no. oh golly. Wow. Is r- red meat, you know, the big story is don't eat a lot of red meat. What's your take on that, doctor? Uh, red meat's good for you. Um, we need to make sure we're consuming lean red meat. That's that's the kicker there. Um, you need the protein. And, and meat 
provides some really good vitamins and minerals that we can't get from anything else, right? We need some essential um, minerals in our body and meat the best source for that. And so eating lean meat is the best opportunity for you. You ever want to punch a vegan in the face? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to get that close to one before, um, fortunately. But, you know, I think more than anything, it's just the uh, education basis of it. Um, you know, I respect their wishes. I hope they respect ours, too. We're just trying to feed America, honestly. Do you ever go to a restaurant and you're like, this meat isn't good? And you're like, I'm a doctor in meat. I would just like you guys to know you could really improve. Like, do you, are you a snob, a meat snob? If you ask my wife and family, uh, most definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I really don't uh, eat a lot of meat or steaks outside at restaurants, honestly, because I can do a better job at home. But, like, if it, okay, so, like, Roadhouse, you can go and pick out your steak. So we go to Texas Roadhouse. You better guarantee I'm sitting there at that window case <laughs> picking out my steak before I sit down to eat that because I want to make sure I get the best mm-hmm. eating experience possible. Mm-hmm. Okay, final question for me, and then I'll let them, if they have one, ask one. But if you were stranded on an island and no food and you had to eat a human, what meat on the human would be the best to go for? Oh, gosh. Because um, I would go butt cheek. I'll just tell you right now. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I would go butt cheek, you know, if I got to go. It's just straight flesh. But I don't know. You're the expert. Maybe you don't have an answer for this. But I, 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 I just wanted to say a few things and stall and let you think about it. You know, the butt cheek thing would probably be a good one to go with. The problem with that butt mm-hmm. cheek, it might be a little tough, right? So I would go more towards that back area, that loin section. Uh, those tend to be a lot <laughs> tender of muscles compared to the the other ends of the animal. <laughs> what are the got human? Me with knowledge and education, yes. Yeah. Uh, Amy, do you, have a, do you have a question for Dr. Drew Cassens, your nephew-in-law? Well, I want to. I want him to answer the original question that that even got him on here because I brought you up, uh, Doctor Drew, <laughs> my little nephew. That because you told me about ground meat and how when you're ordering a hamburger at a restaurant, you should always get it well done. And people don't do that. They they get medium well, whatever, but well done. So I wanted you to explain why that is. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with ground beef is you think about bacteria on the surface. And so when we're taking a piece of meat, a cut of meat, and we start to grind it up, we're putting all that bacteria on the surface on the interior, and we're spreading that bacteria out. And so with ground beef, you have bacteria potentially all through that product. And so it's very important to cook it to 160 uh, degrees Fahrenheit to make sure we kill off any bacteria that might be in that product. Well, I feel much smarter, and I do know that if I ever have to eat a human, where to go first? I never thought the butt cheek would be tough. I'll be honest with you. I just <laughs> thought it would be meaty. Uh, Eddie, one question for our, uh, Dr. Cassens? Absolutely. So, Doc, when I go to the grocery store, and sometimes you just get lucky, and there's a ribeye right there, and it's like 80% off, and you're like, man, this is a steal. Why is it so cheap? Is it because it's almost going to expire or wh- how can you get that awesome ribeye that's normally like $50 for like 15 bucks? So you're kind of on the right page there, Eddie. Um, it's not necessarily about to expire. That product has been sitting that case for a long period of time, and they're just trying to push out the door. Um, as that meat sits in that retail case for a longer period of time, it'll start to discolor a little bit, which might look unappealing to consumers. But in all reality, it's still pretty safe. And so if you have meat, especially beef, that starts to turn a little brown, just because it's brown does not mean it's unhealthy. Um, once it starts to maybe smell, that's when we have a problem. And so if you have those deals, take it up. I mean, I do it all the time. When I go to HEB and Walmart down here, if I see a discounted sale for you know ribeyes, whatever it might be, I'm taking the deal because I know that stuff's still pretty good and it's going to taste good too. All right, there he is. I think we should applaud him for coming yeah. on with us. We've never had a meat scientist on. Woo-hoo. Doctor, we appreciate the time. Uh, one day, it'll be my goal to have a steak with you and just hear all about it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, Bubba. Y'all have a good time. All right. See you later. There Bye. he is. Amy, great great guest, Amy. Who else in your family does crazy stuff? <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, there we have it. Uh, thank you to Dr. Cassens. Let's play this now. Bobby Brown Show. This is a Bobby Brown Show. Hey. 